Hello guys, and I think we should talk about Russian economy once again, because for a couple of the last months it seems like one of the main front lines with Russia experiencing serious problems. But what actually made me think about this topic for our weekly update were the news from foreign media where Russians confirm they have serious problems with an ordinary barter in the shops and Russia officially had to address United Arab Emirates and Turkey for more import of their butter and all because the prices are rising like crazy with simple butter growing 25% more in price. And you know, it turned out to be very personal because one of my first memories from my very early childhood that was just before the collapse of the USSR is me with my mom standing in a very long queue trying to get two bags of butter. And it was winter and I remember I could smell snow. But honestly, no one of you who have ever experienced a communist lifestyle and that lack of everything can ever understand what may actually happen in Russia sometime soon. And same as the end of the Soviet Union, the end of the modern Russian Federation can actually be marked by the economic collapse. But this was also a week of long-range strikes of Ukrainian drones all over the Russian Federation. F-16 shot down Russian Su-34 and North Korean soldiers getting ready to die for Mother Russia. Seems absurd, but that's what life is when Russia is your neighbor. So let's have a look at all of these important events of the week and not just the week. My name is Anna, I'm from Ukraine, I'm in Ukraine, and if you want to see the collapse of Russia, Putin in prison, and North Korean soldiers liberating North Korea, subscribe. All of this may happen sometime soon, and we will discuss that on the channel in details. So let's start with one of my favorite topics since recently, and that is Russian economy. First of all, all the world was discussing the historic rise of interest rates. Now it is 21% and they had to raise it 2% more, which is insane and was unpredicted even by their economic experts. And I was surprised to learn that right now Russia uh, goes just second in this highest interest rates in the world, only after Venezuela. With countries like Mozambique, Pakistan being in a better situation than Russia. Russia, that claims to be the strongest, the biggest country in the world. Please do not trust those fake images that Russian propaganda or Russian news try to uh, drop into your societies, showing that everything is fine. Trust me, if you had to live in Russia for a month or two, especially not in Moscow on St. Petersburg, you would never believe that this country can win anything. And they have a lot of problems coming in different regions like Chechnya, like Dagestan. We will speak about that later in the video too. But this prices for butter, it was just like my childhood trauma and it made me think more and like Google more. And I was also impressed to learn that in the best traditions of Soviet and Russian propaganda, Right now, official Russian media tries to persuade the population that this high interest rate is actually very good because it will cause bankruptcy. Just think about that. It's good because it will cause bankruptcy of weaker companies and make stronger, more visible and prominent on the Russian market. That is how perverted everything is. That is why with Ukrainian soldiers in Kursk region, Putin keeps saying that everything goes according to the plan. Same as bankruptcy of lots of their middle and small size companies is just what they want. Come on. This is total BS and only people who were zombified for decades can, I think they cannot trust these things too. They just don't have any other choice. They are afraid of protesting and so on. <clears throat> but Russian experts keep making it worse. They also say it's not very wise to have deposits in banks. Well, 
that's obvious. And they actually encourage people to spend money on repairs or things like that because, and they say it officially, what you can mend in your house this month, you won't be able to mend the next one. Okay, <laughs> let's watch what happens next. But honestly, I think that economy can be one of the main reasons that will fasten the defeat of the Russian Federation. Subscribe to see that and discuss it. You know, sometimes I do have this feeling that you need an interpreter, a guide to this part of the world. Because once again, in the countries that have long successful history of democracy, of market, of freedom, sometimes it is impossible to understand that you may not have butter, you may ha have nothing on the shelves in the shops, you may stand long queues to just get, I don't know, rotten uh, tomatoes and still believe that you live in the greatest country in the world. Trust me, my parents had that experience and I remember some of the queues. These are my first, one of the first memories, queues, not Barbie dolls. <laughs> um, so let's continue with more of the military uh, success and uh, until we are not allowed to use uh, long-range missiles, even with North Korean troops coming to fight together with Russia against Ukraine, uh, we keep training our drones and this week they have reached lots of different locations and I think that these long-range drones will develop. Of course, they will not substitute missiles because obviously they cannot carry that much explosives, but they definitely send beautiful messages to the population of Russia, demilitarize Russia and illustrate that the country is totally unprotected and their air defense systems do not work uh, properly. Uh, this week, uh, drones visited Bashkortostan. They also visited Chechnya for the first time. And uh, Chechnya seems like another um, brewing, is it the correct word, uh, area in Russia that can cause problems. Chechnya is uh, a very rebellious republic. It proclaimed independence in the 90s. Russia had uh, the first Chechen war, which Russia lost. And after very violent second Chechen war, they put a puppet government with Kadyrov, whom you cannot take seriously, I'm sure, even if you are very Russia optimistic, just when you look at Kadyrov, the way he speaks, dong dong, um, I'm sure, like, <laughs> uh, so uh, right now, uh, there are lots of things happening, starting from the neutralization of Russian military guard soldier and finishing with Kadyrov's quarrels with uh, the deputies from Dagestan, but all of them represent Yedina Rasiya, the president's party. And uh, this tension is growing. By the way, I have seen one video about the issue with clothes because Dagestan, Chechnya are Muslim countries and they want to introduce hijab in Russian schools. And Russians are very, very like chauvinistic and Ruski Mir doctrine does not go together with hijabs and they don't know what to do. The conflict is growing bigger. But Putin cannot react because he desperately needs the support of Chechen people on the front lines, even though they are not capable of holding Kursk borders. And he had to invite North Koreans. So, oh my God, sometime soon, all this... Uh, different people, foreign people in Moscovia can actually, I don't know, hijack Kremlin. Can you imagine, like, let's play utopia, not anti-utopia. Let's just imagine North Korean soldiers taking over the Kremlin. <laughs> uh, and it seems like the first North Korean soldiers were already neutralized by the Russian soldiers. And again, various conflicts may appear because Russians are very chauvinist. They disrespect all the nationalities that are not Russian. Trust me, I'm Ukrainian. I know that. Um, so it was also a week when we destroyed another Russian bomber, Su-34, with most likely F-16 strike. It might have been Patriot system too, but... I personally uh, hope that more and more F-16s will come to protect Ukrainian skies and uh, more and more of Russian Su-35s 
34 will be uh, neutralized. And uh, it is very important to demilitarize the Russian Federation uh, because if it has some weapons left in 10, 20 years, it will create another dictator. If we do not teach them democracy, and teach is a very kind word here, just to respect YouTube policies, once again, we have to expect another dictator coming from that land in 10, 20 years. They have never experienced that, so they cannot create it. They do not protest. And it is actually difficult because when I want to understand what Russian people are worried about, what they are afraid of, try to, I don't know, send some messages, I realize they don't have normal surveys. They don't ask people their opinion on the streets because people will never express their opinion freely. I know some of you watch this soft Russian propaganda channel for 20 and oh my god, you see that literally like every person is afraid to express his or her opinion but somehow they believe it's normal. Can you imagine this level of fear, this level of suppression in your country? That's insane. Subscribe not to be like them <laughs> and uh, share this information on so your social media platforms because unfortunately Russian propaganda is still everywhere. They have lots of money they invest them in, including the US vloggers. They have lots of TV channels in different languages and for Ukraine at war it's very difficult to spread our message and actually to debunk Russian fakes that can spoil not just our lives but also your uh, political life, your choices, your future. Uh, you know, I don't comment on the US election, but I'm definitely praying that you make a right choice and uh, that you choose wise and that you vote. Please do uh, remember that many people around the world are waiting for the results and are uh, hoping that you will make a right choice. Uh, remember to check our community tab where I have a post and I collect your questions to the famous Ukrainian historian Alexander Pali, the author of the brief course of the history of Ukraine, who will sometime soon appear on the channel in the interview. And I'm interested what kind of questions you want to know about our history. That is such an inspiration. So please visit that post in our YouTube community tab and give your questions. The most liked ones. I will choose and I will ask Dr. Pali. Join me on X, Threads, Discord and Instagram. I share more of everyday life there. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and sponsors of the channel. This means a lot. This adds inspiration, trends and more of good projects to come soon. One of which is Russian Paradox. And check out our merch shop for lots of good items that can work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. But most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. I love you. We love you. We are very grateful. Slava Ukraini!